are. Live. <laughs> we are here. Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are live on Facebook and on Instagram. Welcome to episode number 30, right? 30, that's 30. right. 30 episode. Uh, you know, we say it every time, like, well, I can't believe it's episode I number know. 30. And then I think of Loanne on episode number 630. I'm like, oh, right. Dina, you're such a baby. <laughs> you're, you're a hashtag baby, whatever. We're not podcasters, whatever we are. <laughs> exactly. Um, so welcome to WTF Live. We have a really special uh, show in store for you today. Um it's going to be a little bit of a different show than what we normally do. We're going to show you some installs and then kind of get into a little bit of technical nuances of things. And uh, you want to tell everybody what our topic is today, Vita? I sure will, as I'm trying to get photos as well here. Mm -hmm. So today our topic is roller shades. Ooh. Yes, roller shades. I know. <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> I know. I feel like I should be announcing something. I don't know. <laughs> super, super amazing and, and extravagant. And I'm like, roller shades. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the thing is, though, the, the sexy part about roller shades is it is, um, for me at least, and I think Kim, for you probably as well, for, for us here in the Northeast, it's one of the most popular heart mm -hmm. treatments. Um, so if maybe a few years ago, it was all about cellular shades and maybe even yes. silhouettes, blinds and those absolutely have their place as well the thing that i sell the most of or specify or really often i truly stand behind it and believe it is roller shades yep so without further ado without further ado let me get started bring up our pictures here you know what kim <laughs> it's been two weeks since we've been here live huh? wow. I, so i think my phone is like wait what do you want me to do you want me to go live what? <laughs> let the phone access your pictures on like everything that was set up prior before all of a sudden is gone <laughs> but that's okay all is good here we are yes. here we go okay all right take it away kim all right, so this first project that we have here was one that um, I did for a, a teenager's room. Um, we get this a lot that when they transition from a room, like their middle school room or their elementary school room and they in, get into high school and whatnot, they want things that are just very simple and clean lined. Mm -hmm. So um, she, this particular client, her daughter used to have like balloon shades over the windows and then the old school spring roller roller shades. So the daughter um, really wanted to make her room a little fresh looking. So what we did here was an outside mount blackout shade with a self valance that kind of wrapped around. It's almost like a cross between a valance and a cornice because it's not upholstered. Um, but it's uh, this particular um, vendor does do more of like, it's like a harder kind of balance. Mm -hmm. And um, we did it with a clutch control. You can't tell in the picture, but this fabric had a pearlescence to it. So it wasn't just like oh, a nice. white, uh, just like a basic white roller shade. It did have a little something going on. So I also think that's also important and something to take into account when you're doing just simple white roller shades um, that it doesn't look like a projector screen. You did say that it was blackout, right? And I'm kind of saying that there's nothing can be seen yes, through it. There is, it is blackout. And we opted to go on the outside because I had the whole light control discussion mm -hmm. with the client's daughter um, and how sensitive she was to sleeping. Says the bed is on the wall that's opposite of the um, wall that has the butterfly painting on it. So that this way we, I also made it about an inch wider and we installed it up above the molding so that this way we had the flexibility mm -hmm. to go wider and higher, um, which is another great thing with um, going with the balance because light control with roller shades, especially when you put them on the inside of your window, because of the deduction that you're going to take, you're going to get anywhere from like a half an inch to a quarter of an inch of a light gap that comes through. So these are kinds of things that in conversations that you want to have with your clients prior to um, installing the shades so that this way it's not like, well, these aren't really room darkening. And so did you have any room to mount the shades inside the window or the window is was definitely shallow for any kind of inside mounting um, and you had to go outside or was the decision to made to go outside because you didn't want to have the gaps? So we could have put it on the inside with a clutch, um, but we had the discussion of wanting to make the window feel wider and taller. And we also had the discussion with the light gaps. I um, had the I always like to make sure that the client who's using the room is in the room so that this way they can really 
I can have those conversations with them and explain to them, look, if we put it on the inside and we're emotionally attached to our moldings, this is what's gonna happen. So the daughter was all about, no, I want it as dark as possible without having to add any kind of drapes. I also explained, you're still gonna get a, a bleed that goes around. There is no magic wand that just because you put a shade up, that it's not gonna be completely pitch black dark, but it definitely did the job, but yeah. Perfect. Nicely done. Nicely mm -hmm. done. Okay. I wanted to talk about the um, headers of yes. these roller shades. So you will see this episode. The reason Kim is saying that it's a little bit different is because what you usually used to seeing from us is that we toggle back and forth between the work that either we have done or have been inspired by somebody mm -hmm. else's work. And we essentially show you pictures of actual installations. What I wanted to do today, you will see that we'll, we'll go back and forth between Kim and I, between the actual installs that were done and then we will intersperse those with some close-ups of sort of like the anatomy of the shade kind of that's what I wanted to show to you today yeah. so that's what this this uh, slide shows I wanted to show you one of the variations of the header of the roller shade so what you are seeing here at the top of the roller shade this is called a cassette it is also called a fabric covered cassette. Mm -hmm. The particular of this particular, the particular of this particular, <laughs> the interesting point about this particular cassette is that it has a metal outline all around it and the fabric is inserted inside mm -hmm. that, that metal outline. So a couple of things I want our listeners to be aware of. This cassette has a sort of a curvular uh, profile, okay? So some people may like it and some people don't. That's up to you, but this is, uh, that, that's what this is. And then as far as the fabric nature of it, a fabric portion of it, I want you to understand that, yes, the cassette can have that fabric insert. So it's called the fabric covered cassette, but it's actually a misnomer. What it is, it's a cassette that's made out of metal and it has that metal outline. And then the fabric piece is actually inserted mm -hmm. inside that metal outline. So that's really the proper way of explaining it. It's, I guess it's just not a, a, a great way of, of saying it. So that's why they <laughs> call it a fabric covered cassette. Right, so what, what I want you to know is that this metal portion can be changed. Usually vendors have certain colors of metals um, mm -hmm. stocked in their warehouse. It's usually um, extruded aluminum, white, ivory, bronze, and black. Mm -hmm. I think those are like the usually five yeah. stock colors. Now you can have it custom powder coated if you really want to go wild and crazy. That mm -hmm. that and we have done that as well. But those are your five um, colors, the usual colors that the vendors stock. Mm -hmm. The reason that I wanted to show you these two pictures is you can see that in the upper picture, the, sh the fabric shade is um, somewhat beige and um, it has um, it has some texture to it, but, but color is different than the white color of the of the metal around. So you can see the contrasting there. And mm -hmm. you may or may not like it. Again, that's completely up to you. That's a design choice. But you need to be aware that you need to specify that color of the cassette mm -hmm. if you want the fabric to be either matching or most likely coordinating. So in the second picture, you will see that that fabric is white, the metal is white, and so it's much more of a cohesive look. So there is a little bit of a, a headrail, roller shade headrail 101 there for you. <laughs> so real quick to piggyback on that, because I know I have a lot of designers and some clients that aren't really fans of the round. Um, they have now come out what they call it like a modern cassette where it's square. It's coming. Oh, it's coming. Oh, sorry. It's so coming. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yep. Stay tuned mm -hmm. in just one more slide. But in the meantime, we'll show you um, this actual work that Kim has done. Okay. So this was a project that we just did for um, Ellie Moreau's, one of our clients in Westfield. And we did a blackout shade again. And it's inside now. And we had a uh, we did it with a metal fascia on the inside. So the metal fascia, they wanted to kind of keep it a little bit more contemporary, not necessarily the whole fabric wrapped cassette like you saw in the previous slide. And um, as you can see again, by going on the inside, this is a perfect example of you're seeing a little bit of a light gap that comes even through, it peeks mm -hmm. through the cassette. So that's again, back to the first slide of 
the episode where we were discussing about blackout, these are things that you want to consider. Um, and you could also see, I, I we opted to black outline the drapes, even though the drapes next to it were stationary. I said, you know, let me just black outline them to just kind of give an even another layer of protection so that that way you're not getting that light bleed, but you can still see how much there's a little bit of light peeking through on the side, mm -hmm. on the bottom left of that shade. So these were also clutch control. Um, with a metal fascia, you cannot do cordless. That's just something that we have found out the hard way. I know I, some of the, most of the vendors, unless you know something that I don't need a, that most of them, a, a metal fascia is not allowed with, um, just because of the mechanism of the cordless. Yeah, we've tried it. We've even tried it to like, I even asked Bill, our installer, like, what if we did this and figured out a way to adapt a metal fascia? And I guess mm -hmm. it's because of the fascia brackets, because there are the box brackets that they, you need the fascia to click. Right, into right, it. right. That, that would make sense. I'm trying to rack my brain now to see if I've ever done a metal fascia with a cordless lift system. Um, and I, I, I can't see them off the top of my head, so I have to believe you. Yeah. And I think your reasoning of those side brackets. Right. So with it, what Kim is saying is with the fascia, you need to have a side bracket. It's a square side bracket and the fascia actually snaps on those brackets. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the cassette in the previous slide, because this whole cassette is one whole yeah. unit, the bracket is installed independently of the cassette. It's just at the top, exactly. Like it's kind of, it, it kind of kind of grabs right 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 yes um, so, yeah yeah that would make sense so that's something to consider and then also with the metal fascias because the brackets are box brackets um they are anywhere from like three like a three by three square mm -hmm. or a four by four square or five by five square depending on your installation so this Ellie is really, Ellie and, and or her husband, Mike, um, they're really good at with the window treatments of giving us enough of an inside mount clearance. So this way um, they know ahead of time, they're kind of like, okay, we might specify a shade that has a fascia. So let's give window works enough of an inside mount clearance so that this way the fascia isn't sticking out. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that they built this house? Mm -hmm. They built it. Uh huh. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Well, Nicely yeah. done. Okay. All right. That's great. <laughs> All right. So here we are. <laughs> here is that um, that other the, the fascia that <laughs> that you were mentioning before. <laughs> so in the previous sort of anatomy one on one slide, I showed you the fabric covered or wrapped cassette. Here I am showing you actually two different things a fascia and a cassette, but more of a square look. So to mm -hmm. your earlier point, Kim, yes, some people don't like to have that rounded profile. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot sleeker and more contemporary to have a square one. Now here in, in the, there's two separate pictures at the top, you're seeing a, a square uh, fascia, which is exactly what Kim was talking about in the previous slide. So you have those square brackets, you have the fascia that snaps onto the bracket, and then you have side end caps that cover the brackets because the brackets by themselves they're not really pretty they're nothing mm -hmm. to look at so you definitely want to cover them if you're mounting on the outside like what this picture is now the what i have found kim is that these types of um, fascias they some people definitely like them for residential environments and that's totally mm -hmm. cool but where i'm really seeing them a lot is in more of a commercial environment right. so you see them in like doctor's offices and you know any kind of medical offices um you see them if you're out and about into like a starbucks or anything mm -hmm. like that that's where you see them a lot as well they are there it's extruded metal they come in those stock colors that i was talking about before and they can also be a custom powder mm -hmm. coated as well and uh, they're also a really good application for outdoor installations too, because mm -hmm. these shades, they can go either inside or outside. And if you did want to cover your roll, it is this kind of metal fascia that mm -hmm. you have to use. Yeah. The new cassette that Kim was talking about before is the picture on the right. And uh, the it's a square cassette, it's fully fabric covered. So if before I was saying that the cassette is actually metal and there is an insert of fabric inside mm -hmm. it, so you can see the outline all around, this is actually a fully fabric covered cassette. It's square, it's very sleek. The only place where you see the metal is 
or plastic mm -hmm. is on the sides oh, with those end caps, right? So if you're mounting these on the outside of the window with no draperies, you will see those end caps. So again, make sure mm -hmm. that the color that you specify coordinates with the color of the fabric of the shade. If you're mounting them on the inside and you still want to have the the end caps. Then the only thing you see, you don't see the full side, but you do see the front portion mm -hmm. of that end cap. So again, right. still need to make sure that all of your colors are coordinating. Yeah. And then with the, what's cool is with the square cassette, you can do cordless because I, I've done that. Once the square cassette started coming out, you can do the cordless operation. The other thing too, that I've started doing um, with a lot of the new builds with the black windows. Mm -hmm. And um, luckily when the builder gives us enough of a space inside the window, what we've done is we've done a black metal fascia. Mm -hmm. And if they wanted just like a simple white roller shade, when black chains so that oh that's interesting so it's so, a, we're a contrast yeah. i've never done that before so, so white will, shade with a black top header and then a, and a black chain so when the shade goes up it just looks it like disappears it disappears into the it, window it disappears and it just looks oh, like it's cool. part of the architecture of the window because if yeah. you're paying and if your client's paying for black windows but then you want to put something in it's almost like any it's like oh what do i put in there so I thought of that in this um, really, um, this larger contemporary home that we did in on, uh, Franklin Lakes right before uh, quarantine where they just wanted simple roller shades, which is like, I don't wanna interrupt the black lines of everything. And I was like, well, what if we did what we did in your parents' beach house, which was also a contemporary beach house. That was the first time I did it, like the different fascia than the shade. And I had to warn the installers, like, this isn't wrong. This mm -hmm. is intentional. <laughs> and they look at me and go, why do we have two different things happening here? And I was like, no, because then when they roll it up, that's a great idea. Like that. That's a great idea. There it is. That that tip right there is worth the so, price of admission. <laughs> you can have it, everybody. All right. So this is um, this goes back to uh, a combination of the uh, slide, the second slide that Vita showed. So this is an inside mount. Again, all of these are blackout, um, but this is perfect for you to see because I guess these are things that you don't necessarily think about and we've made the mistakes. So just learn from our, you know, learn from our mistakes essentially because I we've made well, that, that's what these shows are all about. So we can share people what we've done wrong and you guys exactly. can do better. <laughs> so look how you can see this here, this shade, is a room darkening roller shade. It is cordless because you can kind of see the clear handle at the bottom. Um, there wasn't enough inside mount clearance. So I don't know if it's hard to tell, but you can kind of almost see the shadow on the right. Mm -hmm. So the headrail protrudes forward. Which the headrail protrudes forward. The fabric sits closer to the glass, but the headrail does stick out. I think it was sticking out about an inch. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see here the halo effect mm -hmm. that you're getting on the side. So it's not a true room darkening. So when the shade is all the way down, you're gonna get that light bleed on the side. Now, because this is cordless, your gaps on either side are the same. When you do anything that has a clutch, your gap is gonna be larger on the side with the clutch because we need space for the mechanism and the headrail. So mm -hmm. some the side with the clutch usually is about a half an inch. Mm -hmm. And let me just make sure to explain to people what the clutch is. What Kim mm -hmm. means by that is that there's a little wheel up at the in the headrail, um, and 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 it's got like indentations so that the cord, which is usually a beaded cord, can fit into those. Kind of like mm -hmm. it's kind of like a watch, like like those watch wheels. They sort of like mm -hmm. you know go into each other like that. Yeah. Like right, that. right. So, um, so anyway, so that's where that cord, which is usually a beaded chain or beaded beaded cord, it goes into that clutch, uh, and the cord comes all the way down on the window. And the mechanism is like this: it's a continuous loop, and you pull on the loop like that. It goes into those indentations, and it pulls the entire roll up or down. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted no, to make sure no, that I got right. that. Totally. So yeah, so this is just another example of have those conversations. It's always better to have the conversation in the beginning so that this way, if your clients or if you are very light sensitive, then in that situation, we would have put the, we would have put the shade on the outside and made it even a little wider than the molding to help push the light onto the wall. You're still not, it's not going to be a hundred percent foolproof, but it will help with that bleed around the, the shade. Definitely. 
All right, so I'm going to continue with my little theme here of giving you the um, the anatomy of the shade. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm moving down onto the shade. And at first I was at the top in the head, oh. now I'm moving all the way down, guys. <laughs> so what you're seeing here is a slide with different variations of the bottom hem. Now, this particular slide comes directly from the spec book of the vendor that we use. It is our preferred vendor. It's called Crown Shade Company. They're located in Maryland, and uh, that's where we buy not all of our shades because not everybody has everything that the clients want, but it certainly is our first stop for where we go. They're really great partners to us. They're wonderful to work with, good customer service. They um, bend over backwards for any kind of last minute um, needs so anyway to totally not 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 a paid endorsement at all <laughs> i wanted to make sure that i gave credit to this particular slide because it comes mm -hmm. directly from their spec book and those are their hems so every company every vendor has slightly different variations of these so if you decide to go with hunter douglas or lafayette or grape or whatever you decide to go with make sure that you pay attention to what that vendor has the reason that i bring it up to you today is to let you know in its simplicity that every that there's a hem a bottom hem to think about and to specify mm -hmm. it's not just like you can just forget it and uh, uh and then it will default to whatever the vendor wants you really need to think about it Okay, so here, the, the two standard hems that this particular vendor has uh, are the two on the left. They're either a self-sealed hem or mm -hmm. what we call an, what they call an internal designer hem. The internal designer hem is slightly nicer. It's still a standard, so that's our personal default for Vitalia Inc. All yeah. of our templates for roller shades are kind of pre-filled almost with the internal designer hem so that we don't ever forget what it is that we wanted to order. Because yeah. otherwise, the vendor, hey, Sandra, <laughs> um, the, the, the vendor will automatically default to the self-sealed hem. Self-sealed is exactly what it says it is. You take, if, if you're familiar with fabrication, a, a custom fabrication, yeah. you know, you take a fabric, you roll it onto itself with the, with the roller shade, you can seal it and boom, it's done. Now, the one thing that all of these hems bottom hems have is the weight bar at the bottom right. so it's self-sealed you you roll it up t um, once seal it and there is a weight bar at the bottom and the reason you want to have that is so that when the shade fabric is coming down on the window mm -hmm. depending on the size but even a little one you know, and definitely the bigger one, they may tend to kind of um, like sway and sort of oh, work, walk. like, yeah. what do you say, walk? Well, yeah, we always say like when the shade is moving, we're like, oh, it's walking to it's the left. Walking. Right, it's right, walking right. to the right. I'm, yeah. ca I'm calling it warping. So it has like yeah. that, that, that yeah. sort of like a <laughs> walking, warping, moving kind of feel. Yeah. Right, and exactly. so the any kind of uh, weight that you have at the bottom, whether it's actually draperies or Roman shades yeah. or roller shades, any kind of weight keeps the fabric straighter, not 100% straight yeah. ever, but definitely a lot straighter. And um and prevents it from walking, warping, moving, <laughs> doing the thing that it wants to do. Okay, so those are the two standard ones for this company. Now mm -hmm. there's a couple of um, sort of upcharge variations and uh, um, they, they, you can have, um, it's, it's the same kind of concept in the fact that there is, there, there is a hem and, and there is a bar and there is a weight, but it's just the way it's executed and the way it's done mm -hmm. kind of goes up a little bit nicer with each, progr progressively nicer with each step. So it may be a, a, a bigger, nicer, more hefty bar and it's covered in fabric and it has end caps. And there, um, then the next one is the bar is actually exposed. So it's mm -hmm. a metal bar. So the metal at the bottom can be matched to the metal of the uh, fascia at the top if that's what you desire and then the very last um, variation there is a um, architectural bar is just a sleeker bar with mm -hmm. uh with a slimmer profile so i know it's a little bit hard to see these in these particular pictures so if you remember nothing else from the slide you guys i want you to know that the bottom hem on roller shades is not to be forgotten it's something no. to be thought of and it's something that you have to specify otherwise and and then in order to specify if I go through the specs of the vendor books and they're all very detailed or of course if you don't want to do any of it yourself then you come to Kimberly and I and we do it for you <laughs> which of course that's what we can do it with anything um, but if you know nothing else just remember that uh, that's a detail just like all the other details and window treatments that needs to be kind of thought of and, and specified by you guys. 
Yeah, and it's a, it's, it's a particularly important detail when you're dealing with cordless roller shades because we do a lot of cordless now because of child safety and whatnot, and especially if the shade is white. Um, and depending, some companies don't have, like Hunter Douglas has their handle already embedded into the bottom rail mm -hmm. of their cordless shades, but other companies don't. So think about that when you're specking cordless shades, especially a white one that you don't want to be putting your hands right at the bottom of the shade. So that's where the hem bar kind of plays into that. Yep, exactly. Okay. All right, so this was a project that we did in Manhattan. These are solar screen shades, which we do. I have Billy installing about 15 of them right now in the oh, city. Nice. He's actually doing a, a double uh, shade combination. So a blackout shade behind oh, and cool. the solar in front with the uh, metal fascia. So, nice. but this, this- um, Double bracket, so double, truly double yeah. shade. So nice. it's like one on top of another. Yep. And the blackout goes down again another show that's a whole that's a whole other <laughs> yeah. we're just giving you roller shade 101 for today uh, yeah. but these shades are great for um when you have a view but you want to you know protect your window have the uv and keep out the heat so this client these are um they live in manhattan and they had these windows on two sides of the apartment this is in uh oh, the living corner. room mm -hmm. yeah so we um went with the max amount of width that we can do. So you can see it's a lot of skinny windows. So that's where it gets a little tricky when you're trying to figure out window placement, like shade placement. You're not gonna wanna have like six little mini shades cause that's gonna look absurd with all the gaps and everything else. So, and it also depends on like the one in the middle, you can see that one has its own shade. You kind of can't see it on Instagram because Vita's kind of blocking it, but that window actually functioned. Sorry. <laughs> and it tilted open and it tilted open. So we made that one its own little individual because the clients did want to have the flexibility of like maybe tilting the window open and things like mm -hmm. that. That's another thing too, to think about when you are doing work in these high rise buildings, how do the windows function? Do they tilt out? Do they tip in? Because if they tip in, is the cassette head rail going to be blocking it, depending on where you're installing it? This particular install, we went all the way up to the ceiling. And we mounted mm. it right into the ceiling. So we mm -hmm. can really maximize getting the shades off the glass and giving that window the ability to tilt in. These are also motorized shades because no one's moving, going and you know moving all these shades and like 10 see. times for every yeah window. like and every time you want to do it it's crazy so these are um on rechargeable battery uh, uh mo or motors so what happens there is what you're going to do is it has a little wire that comes out of the uh, cassette head rail and then you plug in your shade with like something as small as thin like an iphone cord it's not anything thick or or anything and you plug you plug your shade in, you plug it into the wall and you let it power up overnight, you unplug it, boom, you're done. So a couple years ago, we'd have to get up on a ladder and actually change batteries out of, out of a wand and you would have to either call someone or if these are so high up, you'd have to get a handyman in the building to do it for you. This kind of just makes it really simple because all you have to do is just plug your shades in and then they just self-charge and then you're good to go. Yep. This this one was operated also with a multi-channel remote. It's Sunfi motorization, so it's a multi-channel remote. I think it might have been a five or it might be a fifteen. I'm, I don't remember off the top of my head, but you can get up to a fifteen channel, so you can operate up to fifteen shades on one remote. Nice. Um, the one thing that I want to say about the solar screens or sunscreens mm -hmm. is that they do come in different percentages yeah. of opacity or another way of thinking about it, the different percentage of how much you can see through. Um, usually, depending on the fabric, they come with either 1% of uh, being able to see through, 3%, 5 10 and then it goes like 13 14 15 so those are kind of the increments mm -hmm. that we usually work with yeah. and um it's it's a never-ending question and it's, it's like it's it, it turn it's a uh, right a debate for do we do one percent do you do ten percent how much sun comes in but you know it's people always want to see their view <laughs> they want to get the light but at the same time they want to uh, protect mm -hmm. their furnishings and they want they don't want to get glare on their tv so yeah. it's it's a constant battle of 
how much do you leave open and at the, but at the same time secure the full protection that the customer right. wants to see these particular ones are 10 percent. and there's another thing that i just also want to bring up with that what however much you can see out during the day Mm -hmm. is how much people can see in at night when you have the lights on. There That's a no, great rule. That's a great rule of there, thumb. We use it all the time. There is no magic wand. We are not Harry Potter. We cannot, there are no shades that you can see through during the day and you're fully private at night. And I've run into situations where clients, unfortunately, have been sold on the fact that they're private and they can see out during the day, but then at night no one can see it. Yeah, oh, wow. In the dark, yeah. I've walked in and I was like, you know, people can see into your bedroom from the front of your house when you have the lights on at night. And the, this one particular client said, yeah, I know. I was told that I would be private. I said, no, 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 no. Solar screen shades are meant, they're that solar. They're meant to help with the glare, with heat, with UV protection. They give you the flexibility of being able to see out during the day, um, but they are not by any means like a privacy shade. You're, it's going to be see-through when the lights are on, especially if you go with like a 10%, right? When you have the lights on, you'll feel private. You just won't be. That's right. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to build on what Kim just talked about. Mm -hmm. And that is the different lift systems. So um, there's really three lift systems that you have with roller shades. The first one is your beaded chain cord that we alluded to mm -hmm. earlier. And that is, it's a continuous loop. It's exactly what it sounds like it is. And you pull on it and the shade goes up or the shade goes down. And just like many other shades nowadays, anytime you have a loop, you have to worry about child child safety. So every vendor pretty much provides you with a safety, with a child safety um, anchor. Uh, anchor cleat, right? So which is what you're seeing there. They come in slightly various shapes and forms, but essentially that's what they do. They mm -hmm. secure the, you, the, the chain loops through them, and then it gets attached secure to the window, either inside or outside, depending how it's installed. And that way um, the chain cannot be pulled out and the child, God forbid, couldn't possibly put mm -hmm. the head through it and you know, nothing tragic can happen. So, so that's the manual operation. The next operation is cordless. There's really nothing because it's a cordless. There's really not much for me to show you there. All it is, is uh, the actual mechanism is inside the headrail. Mm -hmm. And by the way it operates on the mechanical level, as far as the customer is concerned, you will grab the headrail to pull it down and then you kind of push it up, kind of put your hand underneath the headrail mm -hmm. and you push it up and it can stop at any increment wherever you decide side to stop mm -hmm. it. So for me, I think it's like the best thing since sliced bread. If the customer can't afford or doesn't want to put the money, doesn't see the value motorization, mm -hmm. I always, always, always encourage them to do the cordless operation. You know, I say always, we'll say 95% of the time, the, the times that I won't is if the windows are super high yes. and they can't reach them. So, yes. so that's what I would say. It's always the shortest client that wants cordless. <laughs> I'm like, oh, like this. You can't like where you that's as high as we can reach. Right. Not right, getting right. up there. I had one like, yeah, one of my shorter clients. Everything was the entire house was cordless. I'm like, you're not how are you gonna reach? What were you that? thinking? I know. She was like, I know. my husband's tall. I said, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Listen, different things different work for different yeah. people. It's not for exactly. us to say. What is for us to do is to offer the different solutions, yeah. the different options, and to educate you so on what's available. Mm -hmm. And so, and then the third one, of course, is what Kim was talking about earlier, and that is the motorization. And this is, for example, uh, one of the remotes that's available. There's different... Uh, looks to these remotes, like Samfi has their own. This particular one's, one comes from um, Roli's Akmida. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but essentially the idea is, you know, you put on the push on the button, it goes up, you push on the button, it goes down. There's another button for it to stop. There's usually a favorite button, which if you push it, the shade comes down to your favorite place spot on the window. So wonderful, wonderful things. And then this is actually the charger that mm -hmm. Kim was talking about. So this looks very much like a cell phone charger. It's got a little end on, right, uh, that, that you plug into the shade. And, and it's um, the newer shades, actually, like you were saying, it has a little cord that comes out and you can just plug it in mm -hmm. there. And then the other end, you just plug into an outlet. The size of this is usually about 10 feet. So make sure that you put 
the motor on the side that is closer to the outlet, to the closest mm -hmm. outlet. And and just like Kim said, it's a, it's an overnight charge. So you plug it in before you go to bed and you take it out in the morning and boom, the shade is ready to go. How long does the battery last? That's another eternal question. It depends <laughs> on how often you use it. <laughs> so we usually say it's anywhere between six to 12 months. And I know that the range is vast, but you know, if you use it all the time, you will wear out the, the motor and the charge on the motor faster. If you don't use it as much, then it will last you longer. So, but again, because it's charged so quickly overnight without any kind of hassle to you guys, or to, to the consumer, Consumer, then you know it could be three months for all I care I mean it's like it yeah. really isn't that often and it's not like you have to like Kim was saying climb up there and take the whole thing down take the motor out change out the motor or change out batteries inside the yeah. motor you know remember that thing there's 16 batteries inside it's the wand like oh a big God. wand and then if you put in a battery backwards and you clicked it back in there and then it's like my shade isn't working because we, right. we went through that we would oh, go yeah. and then the installer would pull it down and be like you see this this battery yeah. the plus and the minus goes that yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah all right all right so this was a um it's almost like a cross between like a solar screen and a woven wood, the shade. So it's really pretty. Um, and it has a little, this one has just like a soft self balance and it is cordless. Um, so this is considered like a privacy shade, but it's probably a privacy shade at like a one. And depending on the vendor, um, certain vendors have like levels of opacity of like one being the most see through, going up to five being the most opaque aka room darkening. So this one, um, I just wanted to show you because sometimes we want to use the look of a woven wood, but you want something that's a little flat and, can, and a little sleeker looking. So this particular- And you don't want to have a stack at the top like a yes, woven wood does. Yes, so what's nice about this is you kind of get the look and feel of a woven wood, but then also get the look of a roller shade when we pull it all the way up, all your, the only thing that's obstructing your view is that like four inch valance. Nice. It's it's very pretty. And I'm glad that you put this in, Kim, because um, roller shades sometimes get a bad rep yeah. mm -hmm. because people think back to the 80s and the roller shades that yeah. our parents and grandparents yeah. had. Right. They had scalloped edge on the bottom. That was, you know, one hideous thing that we no longer do. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come back. You know, I say hideous, but I'm sure yeah. it'll come back five, five years from now and be like, look at this beautiful scalloped edge. Yeah. <laughs> But but the, the, the mostly what the reason it gets a bad rep is because of its um, spring mechanism and you mm -hmm. pull it down and it never stays in place right. and it just kind of like, you know, jerks back up and you kind of have to pull and tug and uh, it's a mess. So, but listen, we've come a long way since the mm -hmm. 80s <laughs> and the mechanisms have really improved. And not only did the mechanisms improve, but the fabrics improved as well, which yeah. is exactly what Kim is showing here. There are a lot of fabrics out there from various um, fabric manufacturers and shade manufacturers that are not just your blackouts and they're not just your screens. I mean, screens have their own place. Like what we're saying, there's a mm -hmm. different percentage of opacity and openness, but there's also these beautiful, be you know, I think they're beautiful in their own right, mm -hmm. um, fabrics that have more of texture and they have a pattern and they have interesting designs sometimes and they may look like natural woven woods or they, uh, lately the, the one swatch that we just recently got from Sheer Weave, it, it mm -hmm. looks like linen, like literally oh, it yeah. comes down mm -hmm. and looks like a linen fabric yeah. and it's it's yeah. quite pretty. So, yeah. so there's a lot to be said about roller shades and being that the 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 tendency now with window treatments as it was with anything else is to go simpler more streamlined mm -hmm. uh, less frou-frou less of anything else just exactly. like a very simplistic approach roller shade is exactly the type of style that and window treatment that fits that bill right all right Okay, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, I'll put that in. Okay, the reason that I wanted to put it in is to let you guys know, again, our one of our purposes here is to educate you on the possibilities. And mm -hmm. the one thing that you can do with roller shades is you can imprint a design on it. Mm -hmm. Ha ha. Now, where it makes sense to do it, of course, in all sorts of commercial applications, right? If you have a, a 
dealership, if you have a coffee shop, if you have any kind of store, uh, anytime you want to advertise to the consumer uh, what it is that you're doing, you can mm -hmm. actually, instead of having posters on your windows, you can actually imprint your logo or uh, any kind of image on those shades. And when they come down, that's exactly what, what is seen to the consumer, which is what you see in these pictures. Mm -hmm. You can also use it not just for the commercial application but for residential application mm -hmm. as well think about children's rooms right you can um imprint you know without infringing on any kind of copyright but uh you think about like a boy's room and doing some sort of a boy's um imagery or, or sports mm -hmm. theme right right again without any inf copyright infringement there mm -hmm. or for a girl's room you can do a pretty princess or a star you know whatever it is that your pretty girl is into the idea is that you can really decorate the windows while still being simple and streamlined on the window while still providing all the functionality that it does you can make it pretty and you can um, reflect your child's personality and really you can decorate the room without introducing any fabric or any mm -hmm. additional um, layers to to that sure. yeah we actually did a, a project like this and I have to find the photo it's somewhere in like the archives where um, this company the shopping center that they were in wasn't allowing them to put posters in the window and they had like a, a, a screen wrap that they wanted to put with their logo and everything else um, but they said well can we put our information on shades and they're like yeah that you can do because it wasn't like stuck to the window so we'll have to have like a whole nother wtf on like really specialty and super custom mm -hmm. and that'd be cool it's definitely something that can be done so we'll go into more detail and depth on that perfect my goodness, this is a long show today, Kim. Wow. We did a lot. Wow. <laughs> so this is uh, the last, this last slide. Yeah. So this is. Um, I wanted to show you um, solar screen shades in like a res simple residential. This is in someone's kitchen. It's a local client to us in Livingston, and um, they this faces their backyard. Their their backyard is pretty private. They have a lot of shrubberies around, so it was the kind of thing that they didn't feel like. They, they didn't want to cover up the window too much because they have a really pretty backyard and a pretty view. Um, but when they would sit down to eat, they felt like they had to hand out like sunglasses to people because the sun was coming in. So this was a great um, solution that we came up with. We put some solar screen shades and then we just finished it off by doing some custom cornices over the top. Mm -hmm. And then we did a matching like little baby cornice on the French door there on the outlet. Uh, yeah. Now the cornice is it covered in the same fabric as the screen? No, no. We picked um, we because we, you can do that. We have done that, do that too. We've mm -hmm. done that as well. We've done that in the city um, where we've done where we, where we did that. The client really wanted that kind of finished look, and um, completely yeah. uniform. Yes, yes, but yeah. So that's just another way of showing you that you can these shapes that you kind of see in commercial applications. You don't be afraid to use them in a, in a residential. Project. Definitely, definitely. Um, oh, th that's me. I'm like, what? <laughs> this, this concludes our episode on roller shades. I hope you enjoyed it and you could see how it, it, the roller shades can be used in both residential and commercial applications as well as get some anatomy 101 and really uh, particulars and the details of how they operate and you know what, what's what there. So if you liked what you saw today, we would love to connect with you guys. And um, to do so, we have a little free gift for you. So for mm -hmm. me, I have a report that I wrote. It's a free lookbook that you can download by going on my website. And it is 37 and a half window treatment design ideas that you can still swipe and make your own on your next design project. It's uh, something that I put together, curated by um, yours truly. And um, it just shows you the various styles and ideas and options, possibilities, variations. And uh, you pick what you like and uh, discard what you don't. But you can get that report at vitaliainc.com. In uh, Facebook world, thanks so much, Gina. Glad you enjoyed that <laughs> today's episode. Thanks, Gina. <laughs> and then for Window Works, we also have a free ebook on our website. If you head over to uh, Window Works 
nj.com. You can download Architectural Digest is Incoming, 10 Things You Need to Know About uh, Custom Window Treatments. The way I wrote this ebook a couple years ago. And it's if you're new to the window treatment game, you're not really sure what you want. Um, it talks a lot about light control and things like that. So if you just want to get a little education before you call a window treatment specialist, you want to download this ebook. Awesome. And to keep up with Miss Luann, because she has a very big week this week. It's a very, very big week. The next book is uh, goes on pre-sale this Thursday, the 10th. Or that, no, a week yeah. on December 10th. So not this, obviously, a week from today. So yeah, and she's doing a whole big show. So head on over to LuannNigara.com so you can learn all about the next book you do not want to miss mm, i can't i can't wait to read it and i can't wait to attend the party the party yes. is also on thursday the 10th so definitely um join luann and her 10 um guest Authors. experts for for the uh, for the live party and of course tune in to the uh to the wtf episodes that luann and i do as part of her podcast as a matter of fact we're recording our next one this coming tuesday and the oh, last okay. one was really really great mm -hmm. um, we actually answered some questions people were writing in with questions and luann and mm -hmm. i answered two of uh, two selected ones online i mean online yeah. on air so <laughs> um, very nice very nice <clears throat> and uh Connect with me, please. I am Vita at VitaliaInc.com. You have my phone number. You have my email. I'm very active on Instagram. I would love to connect with you. Please DM, PM, email, call. Um, it would be great for me to know who is listening. I would love to see your or hear your questions as well. And just um, follow us. And um, uh, if you are a designer in the Philadelphia area, we are that one-stop go-to resource for all things window treatments, uh, hard goods, soft goods. We're a fabricator. Uh, we go out on appointments and uh, measure. We take full responsibility for everything that we do, order, fabricate, and of course, install. So we are the partner for the, for, for, for the trade. And if you are located in the New Jersey or New York area, please connect with us over at Windowworks on Instagram and Facebook. We are at Windowworks. Um, emails over all your questions. We would love to help you on your next window treatment or awning project. We um, not only help designers, we are, we are also open to the public. So. Don't worry about hanging your window treatments or anything like that. We take all that guesswork out. We have, uh, our team is expanding. Um, we have many new installers on our team now. And we have Jessica, who's our new design assistant, who is helping the sales team on the awning and uh, interior side of everything. So we have a lot of great things happening over at Window Works. So we would love to help you on your next window treatment or awning project. That's awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed it um, today, as well as um, all the other episodes. We have 30 um, on the books already, mm -hmm. and uh, we have no plans of stopping either. Oh, so we are marching right on in into 2021 <laughs> with more amazing information. So please join us here live every Friday at 12 noon for the next episode of WTF Window Treatment Friday, the live edition. Bye, everyone. Have a good weekend. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.